Ireland, a place long associated with religion and conservative values. But over the last few years, the country has reinvented itself as a new and progressive Ireland. In 2017, the Irish government extended this spirit of inclusivity to its traveller population. As Taoiseach, I now wish to formally recognise travellers as a distinct ethnic group within the Irish nation. But three years on, has anything changed? That's 2017 with 2020 still the same way. Actually, discrimination is getting more worse than even before that was brought out. Kick it, kick it, kick it. Get it quick. We're not animals. We're not criminals. We're not trying to do anything bad or... Do you know, we're not these people that the people are trying to betray us as. The fact that there is so much adversity faced to travellers uh, in Ireland today is, is a shame upon us all. The O'Reilly family have lived near Enniscorthy for the past four years. They currently live on family-owned land in a makeshift halting site with no toilet or shower. The sunny noodle filly. Double bread Doncaster. She's number one on the planet. She's two year old, there's nothing out there like her. She is mine now. There's my sister Margaret, her husband. There's my brother, his wife. And then there's my family, my mother, and my four younger brothers and sisters. There's two girls and two boys. It's actually living here at the minute, but it's just a new baby Margaret has. Currently, there are no men on the site. Noreen's father and eldest brother are both in prison. They're well known in the traveller community as the Rubber Gang. It's a, a nickname on the middle if they say the rubbers is like mine. I have it actually printed here. That's my husband, Patrick Rubber Rogue. The family say that police attention has always been intense. When the guards hear O'Reilly, well, that's a big deal. Like if the Rubber Gang is back, or when they hear the O'Reilly's in town, there's Guards are probably off duty, you have to come back on because there's criminals back in the town. Or if something goes missing, like if downtown a shop gets broken into, well, our yard is the first target. It's all down to your gang name, it's all down to the rubbers. It's just the name that's on my family for years. And it's all down to them. My father's locked up, my brother's locked up. So for that reason, everything's just based around my family. There's a blacklist, it's not just one, it's all travelling community. And no matter how much they fight or no matter how much they try to get out there to accept people, to accept them as all one, it'll never happen. Because in 50 years time, I think my daughters or my granddaughter will be here telling the same story. It's hard to get them heavy and hard to get fat in them. It's hard to get a filly like this. Keeps you occupied. Keeps you off from going out to town. It's Get messed up, fighting. I'm afraid that the kids get in their head that the guards keep picking and picking at their fathers, picking at their brothers, and they said, here, they're getting blamed for things. Well, here, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll get blamed for it. We'll do, we, we'll do it. If the travelling community could get work, if they could get jobs, there wouldn't be as much crime probably going ahead. Unemployment within the travelling community in Ireland currently stands at 80%. 18-year-old Noreen would like to get a job, but fears it's not possible. Every girl is like a job. I'd love to be a beautician, but I know even if I start courses and do things, you're not getting no further with it because you're just like getting no job, you're getting nowhere. Even if she got the qualifications, 
She thinks she would only be able to offer her services from home to other travellers because she believes people wouldn't hire a traveller woman. You're only doing it from home, and what good is doing it from home is the one thing you're going to be doing. You're still going to be cleaning, you're still going to be cooking while you're at home, because you're not going to be doing things every day. It's not nice for travelling girls to have a dream, and all it is is a dream that's never going to come true. knock and I stood up and I looked out this window here and there was two guards down there at the front and straight away this panic came over me and a scream I just lifted out a scream out of my body I said Chris no it was a lot louder than that and then there was to me two detectives at the door and I was genuinely waiting for them to tell me one of my children is dead god forbid um, or someone belong to me is dead or does that be a terrible accident and I just looked at them and said e guards and no, 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 we're from Kilkenny, Kilkenny County Council and we're here to serve you an eviction notice. You ready, William? Star Stokes and her husband, Chris, purchased their first home in October last year and moved in with their eight children. But less than two months later, they were given an eviction notice from the local council, who claimed they're in breach of a planning condition. They believe it's only being enforced because they're travellers. I just like it because it's bigger. We can just do our own thing here. And there's loads of space. Maybe in time to come when one of them gets married, he gets a wife, there's loads of room for him to pull in with a, a caravan. Do you know what I mean? You can have your family around you at all times. That's what travellers like. My main dream growing up was owning a house in the country and having a big, large family. That's, that's, that's what my dream was. And I never, ever thought I'd have it, to be honest. Two of their eight children have disabilities, and the house has been life-changing for their eldest son, Paddy. It feels more comfortable, because obviously I have a wheelchair, because I only have one leg. But in the last house, like the, like the doors of the house, like they weren't even like, uh, like they were too small and they weren't wide enough. It's perfect, like, because everything's downstairs for me. The kitchen, like, even my room is downstairs, uh, the toilet, just everything. The family purchased the property from a local auctioneer who was happy to sell to the Stokes family. But when people in the local area found out, they tried to stop the sale. We weren't really aware of how bad the neighbours was carrying on. It was the auctioneer that went through complete and utter hell. He was stopped on the street. Is it true? Is the travellers moving in? Is the tinkers moving in? You didn't do it, Michael, did you? You didn't sell him the house. I did, he said, and they're not bad people, he said. They're a family people, he said. In parts of Ireland, planning rules have a requirement for local connection to the area, which they say helps conserve and protect agricultural land. He said there is a bit of a clause on it. He said there is a bit of a thing that the previous owner, he said, applied for planning on the front entrance. She was granted planning for to make it wider. She was meant to hold on to the house for seven years, but she only lived in it, or she only held on to it for two years. The BBC spoke to several locals who preferred not to go on camera. They confirmed complaint letters had been sent to the council, and while they acknowledged they knew nothing about the Stokes family, they talked of travellers having a reputation for criminality and their fears that the area would become unsafe. Others mentioned that the planning rules are made to protect the area, and travellers shouldn't expect to get around these rules. Office said, like, you're in a trailer, you're at the side of the road, they're going to come along and put you away out of it because they don't want you there. OK, no problem. But we went and bought our own property and we're still not left living it. In peace. It's me and Chris 
That's about three years ago now. Family friend Noel Murphy, who is not a traveller but lives in the local area, has been horrified at the level of complaints due to the family moving in. Any area where they live, they're involved with the people there and with communities and all that kind of stuff. So they don't live that traveller life that we think travellers do. Chris and Star don't. They're more like settled people, but they have their heritage. I think country people are a lot less likely to give a, uh, travellers a chance rather than city people. Because city people are used to them now. They've been integrated with travellers with an awful long time. Country people are not. They, they can be a little bit snobbish about their area and they don't want outsiders, least of all travellers. We're used to it all our life. And it's something we learn to accept. But when it's hitting home like that with an eviction order and it's actually threatening the way you live and where you want to live, you have to fight back. And that's what we're doing. I am fighting back. My biggest fear is that they make us, that they, they board up the house and make us leave. That's, that's my biggest fear. Ireland's relationship with its traveller population has never been an easy one. For years, the government worked on a policy of assimilation and enacted laws to try to bring travellers into the general community. Three years ago, the Irish government changed position and recognised travellers to be an indigenous and distinct ethnic minority. Since then, there have been moves to educate the population on traveller history. Senator Colette Keller to speak and you have 12 minutes to outline your case, please. Thank you. Go here, look. I'd like to Senator Colette Kelleher is behind a government bill that's still in its early stages to teach traveller culture and history in schools. Today I'm presenting the Traveller Culture and History and Education Bill. It is a bill seeking to right some of the wrongs in our education system that particularly affect people from the travelling community. As Hannah McGinley... When you look at the hard facts and statistics about travellers' health, mental health, employment, uh, accommodation, uh, 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 education, uh, I mean, when you look at those hard facts, really the situation that travellers find themselves in in Ireland today is nothing short of a scandal. There's a group of people living in our republic who are being treated very, very badly. It's the last acceptable form of racism. There's a gaping hole in our history around our only recognised ethnic minority. When we know better, when we're better informed, then I think the chances are of, of that. Uh, prejudice and that uh, uh, discrimination and that, that kind of stigmatising and othering of people would diminish. Nineteen-year-old Tamira is a student at Maynooth University. So many different people from like all over the place and stuff like that. And like all different accents and like, like this college does absolutely everything. Like there's like 60 subjects to pick from. Last year, she was on a course designed to prepare students from marginalized communities to become teachers. This year, she's embarking on a degree in the hope of making her dream of becoming a teacher a reality. If I was asked, I wouldn't say I wasn't, but I'd never really bring it up unless I knew the person kind of thing. So it's not like something you just like, hi, nice to meet you, I'm a traveller. Do you know, like, it's not something you just say, like, well, I wouldn't just say it. Tamira grew up in Bray, a town just outside Dublin. Most of her family are settled travellers. Not all travellers are literally the exact same. Like, I'm a traveller like a young traveller that's like in college wanting to be a primary school teacher. I knew it had to pass and then after talking to her, I was like, oh, she knows it all. Like she's 
I know it all. <laughs> Who knows it all? Tamira was supported on the teaching course by director and mentor Katrina. They've stayed in touch since. You have to get connected with the access office because, like, I know you text me, like, in the middle of the night and all, but <laughs> they're the people that can actually link you and get you, like, the, the information that you need much quicker than I can. I met Tamira actually in an interview, and it was probably the funniest interview. Don't embarrass me, Katrina. It's not embarrassing. <laughs> she came in. She had fake tan on her hands, which I can relate to because I faked hands my stains myself. It was the summer. Yeah. <laughs> she had fake tan on her hands. And I just remember clearly in the interview, obviously I know the stereotypical information about travellers. Young traveller women, they get married, they don't go to education, blah, blah, blah. And I kind of, you're not allowed to ask about that stuff in interviews, but I wanted to explore with Tamira if she had family support. So I remember saying to her, uh, Tamira, um, so what do your family think about you being here? And she said, just out of the, off the cuff, wow, my nanny and my mammy, ma, are supporting me here. <laughs> and um, I'm 17 now anyway, so I'm too old to be married. <laughs> <laughs> so I might as well become a teacher. I would get married, but like, do you know what I mean? Like, there's no rush. Do you think you'd marry a traveller? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Why? I don't know. Like, I think, like, it's not like I'm saying I wouldn't, but it just, like, depends on the person. Mm. It's not like I'd be going out specifically looking for a traveller husband. Do you know that kind of way? Yeah, yeah. Where, so like, you... if I found him and he was a traveller, then I'd be like, well, then, I married. Just... But if I found him and he wasn't a traveller, like, it's not a big deal either. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> she got that one. <laughs> Mary, come on, you have to have a go now. Can you flip pancakes? No. You told me you can cook and clean. I'd burn an egg if you let me, like I would. <laughs> Only 13% of traveller women stay in school past the age of 16, compared to 69% of the general population. But this hasn't put Tamira off pursuing her dream of becoming a teacher. You got the course because you were like, this young, vibrant female who demonstrated the ability to speak and the ability to do well, and you had motivation. So, like, it wasn't just about you being a traveller. That just was an added, I suppose, box to tick <laughs> yeah. for the course. But, like, I'm pressuring you. Be a teacher, be a teacher, because it's like, I know that little girls like you need to see yeah. people like you. I was on the course last year, and there was one traveller, me. And now it's just, like, good to say that in the space of me, Graduating, like, in the space of three months, like, four more travellers are on that course, like. My sister, she's only 12 now, so she's about, like, good, like, eight years to go, like. But I hope even by the time she gets to it, it's not even that she'd actually have to put up a barrier. Like, by then, hopefully, there'd be, like, a good few travellers in education where, like, it's literally a normal thing. Like, you shouldn't have to be able to stand up in a class and be like, my name's Tamara and I'm a traveller. Two weeks have passed and the Stokes family have heard back from the council. This was an eyesore in the community for the last 14 years. But it's not good news. And the minute a traveller buys the house in, it's disgraceful. Very bad news, really. The response we got two days ago was just, we're no further on. Basically what he said in a letter and an email that we don't fit the criteria. We have no links to the area. It's not fair in this modern world that we have to highlight our children's disabilities, explain to you that we live in caravans and tents in and out of this place. We're all married a mile away from this place. This, it's not fair that we have to do that. The family have been told to either apply for new planning, despite already being told they don't fit the local criteria, or sell the house. Am I meant to look for another local in the area? I don't know. Because that's the only market we're allowed to obviously sell to, if that's the case, if you're only allowed uh, to live here if you're from the area. So only someone from the area can buy it. So we're already then restricted to how many people we can sell it to, but that's not even an option. We're not animals, we're not criminals, we're not trying to do anything bad or do you know, we're not these people that the people are trying to portray us as. The typical traveller way that everything we do is illegal and how we do things is illegal, but we're trying to do the right thing and we're not left. 
I thought by buying our own house, moving into it, that everything would be fine. Never in a million years, I knew there was going to be a bit of an uproar. I knew there was going to be an uproar, like, oh my God, the travellers moved in beside me, uh, we're done, or what's going to happen, or fair enough. I, after a, a couple of months, I, I said, no, they'll be fine, they'll realise that everything will be fine. That we're human. <laughs> it's starting to affect us more now, because we're sick of the rejection after rejection. And I, it's looking to me that they want us just to throw in the towel and back off. She's meant to turn around and say, I know, Chris, look, I don't want to live in that area now. I don't want to bring up my kids in that area. But it's not working with me in yet. I, I, I'm going to stay here as long as I can. And I'll fight it as long as I can. Because no matter where we go, we'll deal with that. Just looking at him, I'm genuinely afraid. I have said it to him, you're going to have a mental breakdown. This case is, is going nowhere in court, and we need to put it to an end for the family's sake. Will you do that? Probably sounds a bit too far-fetched, but I'm afraid of my life that the best part of our years, next 10 years, next 20 years, the important years for the children, to set them up as people for their, for their future, that's just going to be consumed with all this racism, all this house thing, all these things that shouldn't be happening to us. Kilkenny County Council's planning department has told the BBC that it deals with all complaints impartially and entirely rejects any suggestion that it has acted in a discriminatory manner. It says they considered all relevant information under the category set out in the local area plan, which do not allow for consideration of exceptional health circumstances or disabilities. Since filming, Kilkenny County Council has agreed with the Stokes that there will be no legal proceedings, including action towards eviction, until all possible non-legal solutions have been explored and exhausted. Three weeks after filming, Noreen surprised everyone. She got married.